This video has been produced by the Sustainable Energy Society of Southern Africa, Solar Water Heating Division. It consists of four parts. Part 1 is an overview of solar energy and solar water heating. Part 2 covers legislation, certification and standards, as well as an overview of domestic solar water heating system designs. Part 3 covers solar water heating configurations, systems, components and collector orientation. Part 4 are two examples of solar water heating installations. One is a thermosiphon close couple system and one being a pumped direct system. The Earth's climate has changed over the last century. The evidence is overwhelming and the urgency of taking action becomes clearer with every new scientific study. Most of the global warming observed during the last 50 years can be attributed to human activities. The profound impact of rising temperatures in the Arctic provides a window into the future we may all experience. With continued warming, we can expect more extreme heat and drought, rising sea levels and higher intensity tropical storms. Global warming is caused by emissions of carbon dioxide and other heat trapping gases that are emitted primarily by the burning of fossil fuels and the clearing of forests. The answer to these problems does not lie in a single solution, but in diverse energy technologies. Solar water heating, as with other diverse energy technologies, can provide economic stability, a means to natural resource conservation and environment protection for future societies. In regards to economical solar water heating benefits, domestic electricity usage can save up to 70% on electrical geyser consumption depending on the system selected and how it is used. For example, a 100 litre solar water heater replaces 9 kilowatts of electricity per day which results in impressive annual savings. Environmentally, solar water heating systems have less of an impact onto the environment in regards to water, coal, ash, SO2, NOx and CO2 usage. CESA have a code of conduct and all members are to abide by this conduct. This will keep up a standard of installations and ultimately benefit everyone. SANS 10106 is the code of practice for the installation, maintenance and replacement of domestic solar water heating systems. SANS 10254 is the code for the installation, maintenance and replacement of fixed electrical water, hot water systems. SANS 10252 part 1 is the code for water supply systems to buildings. And SANS 10400 is the building regulations. All installations will have the compliance with all of these standards. The solar collector absorbs the sun's energy and transfers it into the fluid inside the collector. A domestic solar water heating system comprises of a solar collector and pipes connected to a storage vessel. A collector can be a flat plate glaze collector or an evacuated tube collector. If the collector is lower than the storage tank, the system will not require a pump. If the collector is higher than the storage tank, the system will need a pump to force the heated fluid down to the tank. Thermosiphon happens when the heated fluid within the collector becomes less dense and rises up to the top of the collector. If the storage vessel is above the collector, the fluid will rise up and enter the tank and as it does so, the colder fluid exits the tank and sinks down to the bottom of the collector. If thermosiphon is impossible, 
and the tank has to be positioned below the collector, a pump has to be fitted. The pump will either be powered by 220 volts through a controller or by means of a 12 volt pump powered by a PV panel. The most common freeze protection device. This system uses a heat exchanger to transfer the energy from the heated glycol into the water. Heat exchangers come in many forms. Examples of these are a double jacketed water heater, an external heat exchanger or an internal heat exchanger. The reason for using glycol in the collector is to remove the potable water from the freezing conditions. Another form of freeze protection in a direct pump system is the recirculation system, whereby the differential controller senses the low temperature of the collector and switches the pump on and circulates the warm water from the tank to the collector to prevent freezing. Retrofit systems are used when an existing standard water heater is adapted and connected to a solar collector. Evacuated tubes come in two different forms, one being a glass in glass type similar to a, a thermos flask whereby you have the glass in a glass tube inside of a glass tube and between the two tubes we have a vacuum and then you have the evacuated tube with the heat pipe on the inside which is a copper pipe with a heat transfer liquid inside of it which has uh, an absorber plate connected to it. In this case we have a 70 millimeter tube with, an, uh, with a selective coating on a, a fin connected to a heat pipe. Another type of heat pipe would be in the double, double glass type heat pipe. The tube uh, takes the heat pipe on the inside on an aluminium fin which transfers the heat from the inside of the tube or the evacuator tube onto the aluminium fin and then onto the heat pipe. The heat pipe probe is plugged into a manifold such as this one. It's imperative to have a very good seal between the, the probe or the bulb and the manifold itself. Another form of evacuator tube system would be a low pressure system or a, an instantaneous type system where the tube plugs into the tank directly and the water actually flows into the tube itself from the tank. On a flat plate panel we have a, an extruded aluminium casing. The glass covers an absorber plate connected to risers and two headers. The amount of risers depends on the size of the panel and the size of the panel depends on the amount of water being heated. On every hot water system, the hot and the cold water should be balanced. The delivery pressure between the hot and the cold should not differ more than 20%. All valves on a hot water system should be of the same pressure rating. In this case we have an expansion relief valve at 600 kPa, it's green, and on this side we have a TNP valve which is red which indicates that it's 400 kPa. These valves cannot work together. This is a pressure control valve, it has a pressure reducing valve and an integrated expansion relief valve. It is 400 kPa, it has a red label. This TNP valve would work with this valve together. A temperature and pressure valve has a probe which is inserted into the geyser which has wax in it and as the water heats up the wax melts and when the water reaches between 92 and 95 degrees Celsius the little pin inside of the probe pushes open a jumper, releases the boiling water or the hot water and lets in cold water from the mains. SANS 10254 states that the probe of the TNP valve needs to be a minimum of 25% of the length of the valve inside the body of the water being heated. In this case you can see somebody tried to make a extra port on the geyser and this probe will not enter the geyser as needed. A vacuum breaker is needed on the hot and the cold side of the water supply to the geyser and the, the hot water out from the geyser. These are two vacuum breakers made by two different manufacturers. On the cold water side of the geyser, the vacuum breaker needs to be on a T above the level of the water of the geyser to alleviate the siphonage of the, the water out of the geyser when the mains is 